Welcome everyone to ISIS Parenting's Breastfeeding Chat and Learn. My name is Nancy Holtzman. I'm a mother baby nurse educator, board certified lactation consultant, and board certified in pediatrics. I'm here in Needham, Massachusetts at the home office of ISIS Parenting. With me today is Katie Goldsberry, who is one of our program associates. She's the mother of two and um, will be moderating in the chit chat room today. And today we have a planned topic, spend about 15 minutes or so on this topic, and then I will take your general questions and answers. And um, I love a lot of the photos in today's webinar, which uh, I crowdsourced from my followers on Twitter. And uh, this picture here, I requested a picture of a mom holding a baby by her holiday decorations, and I got many, many nice contributions. And uh, this one is Danielle. Uh, I believe they are from, now I can't remember, mm, Texas maybe? can't remember where they're from. But uh, I just, I love seeing all the photos that came in and I used several of them. And uh, this topic, breastfeeding issues over the holidays and um, how to avoid some of them, I also put into a blog which was published earlier this week. So you can link directly through to the blog. Uh, for a lot of these written in information and share it as well. And I'd also love to hear people's comments at the end uh, on the blog because we'll be crowdsourcing a bunch of the annoying questions and comments that various family and friends have said to you in the past or will be saying to you over the coming holiday season. So that will be interesting to, to hear. So there's really uh, five areas I'm going to cover, which are very, very common to encounter over the holiday season. And uh, the first and most common, I would say, has to do with the busyness of the season and delays in terms of feeding, alterations, changes in your feeding routines. And very often, skipping feedings, whether it's because you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, um, look at this handsome dad getting helping mom get everything loaded up in the car. Uh, you're getting on the road, you're going to do a six-hour road trip, the baby's sleeping, it's easy to skip a feeding or to give a bottle in the in the back seat without having to pull over and, and uh, take the baby out of the car seat. So it's common to have skipped feedings. You may spend a day uh, in the mall or maybe you're uh, staying in the kitchen doing a lot of cooking, getting ready for a, a big feast. Um, and it's easy to skip a regular breastfeeding session or pumping session. Also, sometimes at family gatherings, uh, your uh, mom or the baby's grandmother wants to give the baby a bottle. Uh, and again, just alterations in your usual patterns. So really try to avoid skipping your breastfeeding sessions. If you're regularly pumping, make sure that you're getting your pumping sessions in and that you don't end up over full. And I'm not going to go into depth in this slide here. I have a whole webinar on this particular topic, block ducts, mastitis, engorgement, clogged nipple pores. They're all interrelated. When you are not draining the breasts thoroughly and frequently, you're going to get over full. Over full can result in block ducts. Sometimes a block duct can result in a clogged nipple pore. One of our regular uh, listeners who's in the uh, chit chat room here is a frequent flyer in terms of block ducts and clogged nipple pores, she can tell you all about how annoying they are, how recurring they are, and how she's had to deal with them. But um, it's not a, a fun or pleasant thing, and rarely, but occasionally, these things can lead to mastitis uh, and um, even an abscess. So those things are not very fun. Um, just a quick look here, and again, you can get into much more depth in the uh, webinar that I mentioned previously. But um, a lot of these diagrams here, let's see if I can figure out how to get my arrow. Uh, is it here? No. Where's the arrow? Is it here? I swear I do this every time. I find it. Eh, whatever. Anyway, um, on the left, you can see how orderly the breast looks. And, and it seems like if there's a blocked area or a firm, tender area in the breast, that there's a direct correlation in a quadrant of the breast, and it drains you know, clearly down to a particular um, uh, outlet of the nipple. And in real life, that's not what it's like at all. If you look over on the right-hand side, I think the milk ducts really look like a big bowl of spaghetti all tangled up inside the breast. And so just because there's a firm area on the top of the breast doesn't necessarily mean uh, that, that you know uh, where, that, where that blockage, you know, where the milk is draining out from. Uh, it's not as orderly as the graphs make it look. However, when there is a blocked duct. And um, Katie, if you're able to find me an arrow and stick an arrow on there, that'd be nice. Um, and the block ducts you can see on the upper left side, 
Um, when, when there's a little bit of bruising in the breast tissue and it occludes the duct or the tube where the milk exits through the nipple, uh, the milk essentially gets backed up in one of these lobes and it can be very uncomfortable and a blocked duct can feel like a deep, aching, bruised sensation within the breast. Sometimes there's a firm or a hard area, it can feel like a golf ball. Um, sometimes you'll see the breast itself, uh, a little blotching area of pink. Um, and um, ultimately, it's quite uncomfortable. And uh, this can progress to mastitis, like you can see on the right-hand side. And then on the bottom left corner, uh, there's the classic appearance of a clogged nipple pore. And the reason I have a shower head here is to show you uh, that my analogy of a nipple is kind of like a shower head. There's about 6 to 12 little openings that you can't, you can't visually see, but that's where the milk comes out of. And uh, again, the bowl of spaghetti is representing the, the whole big tangle of milk ducts within the breast tissue. And if one particular outlet gets clogged up, then all of the milk ducts leading to that, to that outlet begin to get backed up too. And that's where you get the blocked, uh, the, you know, the discomfort from the blocked duct. And uh, if it seals over and a layer of skin grows over it, nothing exits through the clogged nipple pore. The best way to deal with that situation is to open the clogged nipple pore and that will relieve the pressure and the milk will begin to flow again. So again, if, if uh, you've been struggling with recurring blocked ducts or if you wake up and have a tender breast with a um, bruised sensation or if the breast is feeling pink, uh, warm, hot, painful, if you have fever and chills, uh, that's progressing toward mastitis. If you're just curious about these things and you're getting started in your breastfeeding career, um, then I think this is a good webinar to watch. Block ducts, mastitis, clogged pores, and engorgement will give you good background in prevention and treatment of these uh, uncomfortable things. Okay, so moving on to um, other common concerns over the holiday time, changes in milk supply. and um, and you can see how this is also going to be related to less frequent nursing or pumping sessions. And over time, if you continue to uh, nurse less often or pump less often over a, a, a three or five day uh, vacation or, or visit with family, not only are you more at risk for engorgement or blocked ducts, but also a temporary dip in your milk supply. So uh, even when others are around and they want to help hold the baby or feed the baby for you, do take the time to snuggle and cuddle and nurse your baby. It's going to be good for you. It's important for your milk production. Um, and sometimes, on the other hand, uh, your supply may go up. So if you're a, a working mom, you're back at work five days a week and you're pumping three, uh, three times a day at work and now you're home with your baby for a week, you're doing a lot more skin to skin, a lot more direct nursing. Maybe, uh, maybe the sleeping arrangements are different because you're staying in a hotel or you're staying at a family member's house or maybe you have family staying with you so now the baby is in your room again or something like that. You might be doing a lot more nighttime nursing. And all of those things, increased skin to skin, increased uh, direct nursing, more nursing at night, all of those things can temporarily increase your production. So particularly if you're back at work, you can take advantage of that, express additional milk if you have it, um, to freeze it, and uh, you'll be happy to have it down the road, that's for sure. Um, let's see, so is Sarah Faith in the, in the room today? I'm taking a look. She is! There's her family. She's probably, you guys are probably chatting about that. Um, I thought I thought this picture looks very much like something out of a movie. I mean, it just it looks almost looks like a set, you know. It doesn't even look real. Um, but uh, Sarah, I wish you'd turn your face to the camera so we can wave to you, even though you don't have your uh, your wedding veil on. We'll try to recognize you. So more bottles, feeding less frequently. That's going to decrease your supply. More skin to skin, more direct feeding, more nursing at night. That will increase your production. Um, here's one that I really mention because one of the one of the challenges in my role is hearing from moms who are frantic and frenzied because they need to return back to work and their baby will not take a bottle. Uh, and I work with a lot of moms who uh, are, are very, very stressed out over this. And there are what I call adamant bottle refusers and passive bottle refusers. Um, I think an adamant bottle refuser is probably the most stressful. If you have a baby who has a history of being a finicky bottle feeding baby and you've had some challenges with the bottle before, I would really advise you, uh, even if your routine has changed over the holidays, don't skip 
the bottle feedings. Don't get out of the habit of offering an evening bottle or a bottle every other day if that's been your routine. Keep it familiar. So if it's important that your breastfed baby do take a bottle when you're back at work, then be sure to offer the occasional bottle even if you're not using childcare, even if other routines are on hold over the holidays. So a bottle feeding vacation, which I define as going for several days without the bottle, can create a major issue for some babies when you try to reintroduce the bottle again. Um, even if it's just an ounce of breast milk that you're offering every other day, then um, that's fine. You can, you can uh, give an ounce by the bottle or have a family member do that, and then you can breastfeed the rest of that feeding. So they don't have to drink a full bottle to prove they can. But if you are staying with family, if you have um, hand people there ready to help you, then um, having somebody offer the occasional bottle and take advantage of that time. Don't sit across the room and watch. Instead, why don't you go upstairs and take a nap or go do an errand or go get your hair. And of course, I get year-round, but around holidays, there's going to be a lot of parties and a lot of social uh, occasions. And um, really, to summarize, I would say that uh, when it comes to alcohol, less is better but an occasional treat of alcohol is okay for a breastfeeding mom. Some considerations are the younger the baby, uh, the more cautious you should be in terms of alcohol consumption. So if your baby is under uh, a month or, uh, excuse me, yeah, under a month or six weeks old, um, really limit yourself. Um, and uh, typically uh, around three months, moms will say, you know, they're ready to have a beer or two. And um, I always, joke and say that you're going to be a cheap date. So after a year of having no alcohol, you'll be surprised how hard one drink or one big glass of Cabernet hits you. You will be snoring in your pasta um, and uh, you will feel it after a year. My husband jokes and, and says that's, that's he calls that being a cheap date. But uh, you will be a cheap date and really one to two uh, alcoholic beverages is pretty much uh, going to be plenty. And uh, I would limit it to two and that's uh, on an occasion, on a special occasion. Uh, and in, in general, it's best to wait about two hours after your drink before breastfeeding. A good rule of thumb, if you're, if you're happy and relaxed, go ahead and breastfeed. If you're feeling drunk, uh, that's a good indication that the blood alcohol level is elevated and then your breast milk ele uh, level will be elevated. You do not need to pump and dump, but uh, simply waiting for the alcohol to metabolize out of your bloodstream, it does not stay trapped in your breast milk or your breast. So as the blood alcohol level decreases from your bloodstream, it will leave your breast milk by osmosis, go back to your bloodstream, go through your liver, be metabolized out. So you do not need to pump and dump. You just need to wait a little bit. But in general, limit yourself to one to two drinks. Only do it once in a while and wait a couple of hours after drinking if you can. Oh, here's the fun one. <laughs> Stressful conversations and, and questions. Um, I was being a little bit uh, uh, softer when I made this slide because when I wrote the blog post, I, I called it you know, annoying and intrusive questions and comments. But everything from, uh, are you sure he's getting enough? Why are you nursing again? How can he be hungry again? Didn't you just feed him? Why is he crying? He still looks hungry. Why are his hands in his mouth? He's teething, he's teething, he's teething. You're not going to nurse him once he gets teeth. Well, you'll stop that when he gets teeth. Why is she fussing? Is it something you ate? Are you sure you can eat that? Are you sure you can drink that while you're nursing? So all of these comments, why are you putting yourself through it? You're struggling so hard. Um, Pumping, I, you know, people may uh, may give you, um, you know, the, everybody seems to have an opinion. Where is your baby sleeping? Uh, why are you nursing at night? If you gave cereal at bedtime, your baby would sleep. Why do you wear your baby all the time? She's going to get spoiled, you know. And you just have to smile, let it go in one ear and out the other, and decide who they are and how you're feeling, how confident you are at that particular moment. Do you want to educate them? Do you want to ignore them? Uh, realize that a lot of times people's own comments come from their own defensiveness and their own uh, feelings of uh, guilt or um, kind of uh, defense. like um, 
oh, I don't know, maybe you know, I don't even want to go there. Um, but remember that a lot of times the questions and comments that people ask you are more about them and not so much about you. Um, in general, I would say practice nursing in a variety of different settings, uh, different locations, different social environments, so that you become comfortable nursing in different places. And really try your best not to let breastfeeding isolate you. So maybe your baby is at that five or six month old distractible age and you really want or do need to go into a quiet dark room and, and sit there and nurse. But otherwise, um, you know, find a, find a little uh, comfortable chair in the corner of the living room and get yourself comfortable. And if people are, are uncomfortable with it, they can, they can turn away or go to another part of the room or leave the room. That's fine. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, that you need to wave everything right in their face. But you're simply sitting there feeding a baby. Um, and um, there, that's not something that necessarily needs to be done uh, in secret. Um, I have a webinar on nursing in public with a lot of suggestions, particularly for squirmy older babies, uh, and then a lot of logistical tips for the brand new mom who might feel like she only needs uh, her footstool and the nursing pillow and the rolled up receiving blanket and three nipple shields and everything lined up. Uh, you know, just so in order to get the baby latched on. So you may find it challenging to nurse in other environments. I have a lot of tips for you on that. Um, yeah, I think that's about what I wanted to cover. So again, just to kind of reiterate, um, when you do have support systems, like a supportive mother or mother-in-law, whether or not they breastfed, uh, or uh, the baby's grandparents who help you out with child care or errands or just tell you you're doing a good job. Um, thank them. You know, be appreciative for that, but also thank them and tell them because um, I'm sure that you have other people in your life who aren't quite as supportive. Um, and it's hard. You know, it's hard. It's hard uh, to deal with criticism or um, you know those types of annoying comments all the time. So if you have a sister or uh, a family member who's giving you encouragement, it's really nice just to, to point that out to them, how much you appreciate that. Um, OK, so those were really the five things I wanted to reiterate over the holidays. Um, don't skip feedings and pumping sessions and be on the lookout for blocked milk ducts, mastitis, engorgement, things like that. Be aware that uh, you can have some fluctuations in your milk production from feeding less often or feeding more often. Uh, avoid a bottle feeding vacation so that uh, if your baby is taking bottles routinely, you want to continue offering at least an ounce of milk every other day. You do not need to maintain uh, a similar uh, routine like a daycare routine. I'm not suggesting that you give the baby several bottles a day just because uh, you know, just because they get that in daycare, not at all. Um, but one bottle every other day should be enough to keep it familiar. The alcohol question, if you want to indulge, do it rarely. Uh, limit yourself to two drinks and wait two hours. And then uh, dealing with annoying questions and comments from hopefully well-meaning family, just try to let it wash over you and uh, be grateful for the people that give you support rather than annoying questions. Um, been asked um, and comments that you've received. OK, so I'm going to take some questions now. Looks like we've got a good 10 minutes for questions. Uh, and I can see I just have two questions in here right now. So now would be a good time to put your questions in the Q&A box if uh, you've got something that you wanted to ask today. Here's a question from a mom who says, we're going to be going on a trip four and a half hours, most likely giving him a bottle during the break. How long should I wait before starting back on the road? OK. Um, let's see. So if you're nursing, um, here's what I would recommend: uh, get in, the, get yourselves ready. Pack up your, pack up your car, pack up your baby, pack up yourselves. Um, have some snacks. Have a little water bottle with you. Make sure you peed. <laughs> Bring a Tupperware bowl with a lid. We were joking about that the other day, um, because once you hit the road, if there's not traffic and your baby falls asleep, you do not want to stop that car. You do not want to stop the car until the baby wakes up and insists that you do. Um, and so I would just drive. And um, depending on your on your situation, if you're making good time, if your baby wakes up, uh, if he wants to eat, and you're planning to give him a bottle anyway. Uh, then you could bottle feed him right in the car seat, 
and, you know, get in the back, sit next to them, give them the bottle and the car seat. And if you're going to be in the car for a long period of time, you can express milk in the car. So you can bring a manual pump. The Medela Harmony is my favorite manual breast pump. Um, it's not expensive. It's easy to use. Uh, you can keep it in a uh, Ziploc bag, in your diaper bag, or in the car. Uh, it doesn't require electricity. That would be a good choice. Um, or if you have a pump and style or freestyle or what have you, you can bring that right in the car as well. If you're concerned that the truckers uh, next to you on the highway may look down and see what you're doing, put on your baby Olay or your Hooter Hider or your nursing cover-up. Um, and then you can look down and see exactly what you're doing, but you will be covered from the outside. So you can express milk in the car. You can bottle feed in the car. Uh, if the baby is content, you know, a bottle feeding should take 15 to 30 minutes. And uh, your baby will most likely be quite content in the car having the bottle to maybe save the, the pit stop for when the baby is done eating, is starting to get uh, fussy and restless, needs to stretch a little bit and have a diaper change. That might be when I would choose to pull over. Okay, but I don't think there's a specific length of time that you need to wait after giving the bottle before you get back in the car. I don't think so. Next question. My six-week-old nurses only for five minutes at a time. I've tried keeping her awake as well as forcing the boob on her. This results in her crying and sometimes biting down on the nipples. What can I do to lengthen the amount of time she nurses? Okay, that's a good question. Well, um, I guess I'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on in, in particular because some babies do eat for very short periods of time, and some babies can get a very large volume of milk in a very short amount of time. Other babies can stay on the breast for 30 and 40 and 50 minutes and barely transfer an ounce. So I'm really far less concerned with how long a baby is nursing, and I'm much more concerned with the quality of nursing and the milk transfer. Um, also, at six weeks, you are right dad smack in the hardest time of life with a young baby. I think between weeks four to eight or three to seven, depending on uh, how you look at it, uh, those are the hardest weeks. And so at five or six weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if you feel like you are spending your entire day and most of the night holding your baby, walking, rocking, bouncing your baby, feeding your baby, um, and being terrified to put your baby down because they're content in your arms or at your breast, and then as soon as they fall asleep and you try to transfer them down, uh, you know, within 15 minutes, she's probably awake and screaming until you pick her back up again. Um, so even if she's eating for five minutes at a time, if that seems to keep her content uh, for somewhere around one to three hours most of the time, expect that your baby will have a couple of periods of cluster feeding. Most commonly, babies will cluster feed in the morning because milk supply is so abundant, and in the evening because um, they're crabby and cranky and they're working harder for milk. Um, but during the day, if, uh, if she nurses for five minutes and then she seems happy for an hour, an hour and a half, and then she nurses again for another five or seven minutes, and then she sleeps for an hour and a half, um, that doesn't sound too out of the norm to me. I would also focus on uh, is she growing and gaining weight well? Um, and um, other other aspects like that. So uh, I think this mom is local in the Boston area. You may want to uh, come into one of our drop-in breastfeeding groups that are in the centers, and those are free. Um, maybe Katie can post a link so that you can see when those happen. Each center hosts uh, an hour-long drop-in breastfeeding group with one of our board-certified lactation consultants each week, and then each center also once a month has a special event, which is either an evening or a weekend, and those are intended to accommodate women who are back at work Monday through Friday during the, the daytime. Um, and then you can ask some questions. You know, you can get more specific um, with Beth or, or um, Mary Kate or, or uh, Rose or whoever is running the drop-in breastfeeding group there. And um, we also have a breastfeeding warm line if you're an ISIS client that you could ask a few more questions. And if you just feel like you would like some personalized support, uh, and you have a list of questions, I would strongly recommend setting up uh, a lactation consult and coming in and spending an hour with one of us and, and getting all of your questions answered as well as uh, we can observe a feeding and so on. But in general, um, breast compression can help a baby stay at the breast a little bit longer and switching your baby side to side sometimes can help them stay at the breast a little bit longer because I'm not clear if your baby is falling asleep after five minutes uh, or pulling off or you know what's, what's going on. All right, let's see if we have any more questions. And uh, let me take a look in the chit chat room. Here's where the drawback occurs, where I'm the only one on the mic. 
and uh, if I don't talk, it's just like dead air. But let me take a moment, catch my breath, and look here and see what kind of comments we have in the chit chat room. Nice chatter. These are all my tweeps here. So nice. Tupperware bowl with lid, Sarah. Listen, um, Sarah, I, I, don't, I don't know if you were on. I can't remember. I think, oh, it was Meg and I. We were on the sleep webinar. Um, we were doing the sleep webinar either last Tuesday or the Tuesday before that. I think it was the Tuesday before that because we were talking about um, holiday. We were talking about traveling and sleep and the holidays. And we were talking about timing the road trip for nap and, and so on, timing everything for success. And before we started the webinar, before we were live, we were, we were talking about some of the road trips that we've been on, uh, and we were confessing to each other the fact that we have both, am I really going to talk about this live on mic? I guess I am. Uh, Uh, once she peed in her baby's diaper, in a, in a dry diaper, clean diaper from the diaper bag, so that they wouldn't have to stop the car because both kids in the back were sleeping uh, and they didn't want to stop the car. As you all know, as soon as you stop the car, it's over. There's no way that you can pull into, uh, into a uh, rest area uh, and let pregnant mom out to pee while the, you know, while the baby is still sleeping in the back. That is not going to work. The baby will wake up. Um, and my rule of thumb, those of you that follow me on Twitter and saw the Storify about 25 tips for a road trip with a baby, uh, never stop the damn car. If the baby is sleeping, you do not stop the car. You just keep going. Um, and so, uh, yes, there are all kinds of creative ways um, so that you can <laughs> empty your bladder without stopping the car. Enough said. Okay, yes, yeah, Sarah says you must keep extra diapers in the car. Um, I don't recommend uh, that for you as an adult. I think I would have to suggest um, the big, you know, Tupperware bowl with lid. I think it's, it's going to be a lot more absorbent uh, quickly. Uh, yes. So I think it is time for us to say goodbye. No, we had another question come in. Okay, hold on. She has one. I don't know what that says. Baby sometimes has milk coming out of the nose after I feed him, and then I put him down to change him. Is it normal? Yes, I just answered this question on Twitter uh, not half an hour ago. Uh, remember that what's um, the back of your nose and the back of your throat are connected, um, and that's why you get uh, post-nasal drip and a sore throat when you have a runny nose, and that's why um, if your uh, friend makes you laugh when you're drinking uh, milk or Pepsi, it comes squirting out your nose. Um, and uh, if a baby is... Um, if, they, if they have a little bit of reflux or they spit up uh, with a little bit of uh, emphasis, the milk comes up. It can just as likely go out the nose as go out the mouth. And um, also on the way in, if the baby is nursing and, and laying flat and mom has uh, a heavy milk flow, sometimes as the baby is drinking, the, the, the baby swallows milk, but also some of it will drip or seep out the baby's nose. So it's completely normal. It's nothing to worry about. It's not pleasant. Nobody likes to feel stuff in their nose like that. So uh, if it bothers your baby, um, just comfort your baby. You can put a saline drop or two in there uh, to take care of any milk boogers that occur. But it's very normal uh, for milk to drip uh, out of the baby's nose, either when they spit up or uh, during feeding if you have a heavy letdown. OK, it's 12.30, right on time. I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, next Tuesday is the sleep webinar at 12 noon with myself and Meg Cassano. And uh, next Thursday, we'll be back here for the breastfeeding webinar. I think that will be all Q&A next week. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, uh, we have a big sale going on at ISIS right now. And uh, it is a good one, 25% off almost any product purchase, over $100. and. Uh,